The Kenya football scene is still reeling from the shock of the world football governing body, FIFA's preliminary report, which implicates former Harambe Stars defender George Owino in match fixing between June 2009 and March 2011. Owino is said to have been paid upwards of 2.5 million Kenya shillings to induce losses uh, in the Harambe Stars matches. Mukami Wambora with those details. They say the truth always has a way of coming out. This appears to be the reality for former Harambe Stars defender George Owino, who is on the spot after a damning 10-page preliminary report by the FIFA Integrity Department alleges his involvement in match-fixing between June 2009 and March 2011, where he featured 14 times for the international side. He is said to have conspired with Wilson Raj Perumal, an infamous international match fixer from Singapore who has served four years in prison in Singapore and two years in Finland in connection with match fixing. How did this all begin and what has the Football Kenya Federation's involvement been? You will realize, Mukami, that these cases are perpetrated by international syndicates. The, the, people, the people involved are our players but, but with international syndicates. So FIFA is the best place to help us with the investigation. The question is, if Owino is found guilty, what measures are in place to provide justice? According to the FIFA Code of Ethics, manipulation of football matches or competitions result in being sanctioned with an appropriate fine of at least 10 million Kenya shillings, as well as a ban on taking part in any football-related activity for a minimum of five years. However, no criminal sanctions are available in Kenya. But we do have laws which can sort of go around and about and finally get to um, have this person um, accused of maybe fraud or bribery or corruption. But the only thing is match fixing doesn't harm the public directly. So it would be very difficult to get someone and put them in jail because of match fixing. So those laws are non-existent in Kenya. And as we say in law, nulle crimem sine lege, no crime without a law. With relatively no or rather arbitrary punishments available, one fears incidences of match fixing will steadily rise in the country. In June 2018, Kenyan referee Aden Marwa was implicated in a bribery scandal where he was accused of having received 60,000 Kenya shillings before a match. And just a week ago, the Kenyan Premier League club Kakamega Homeboys fired coach Paul Nkata on suspicion he was paying players to fix matches. So what can Kenya do next to cut the head of this snake off? So in order for that offence to move away from private law into public law, there needs to be legislation. But again, you must ask yourself, match fixing, who does it harm? And what is the best way to deal with it? Would you want someone who, let's say, through a game, be locked away for two years? And why? So those are the kind of discussions we have to have at a policy level, not just with the Football Kenya Federation, but FIFA and also the spectators or the fans who feel like they're disappointed with all these things that are happening. As we await subsequent action from FIFA, questions abound. Will justice prevail in this particular case? Will the system change to prevent this from happening in the future? And for passionate fans, a hint of wonder as to whether Kenya lost out on its chance to play in its first ever World Cup. Mukami Wambora for Citizen TV.